Yo, 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 what's good, world? You already know, man. It's your boy, Gio. T.E.P., the Everything Podcast, man. I got something for y'all today, man. Besides your girl, Jaguar Wright, and Orlando Brown meeting up. He got a song that's out, too, that y'all got to check out that he made. I want y'all to check that song out. He actually was kind of going in on it a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't have thought he would have been delivering like that, but... uh yeah check that out but also she's really putting the hammer down on your boy 50 cent she said she got a lot of dirt on him and she know his type of men and she got some people with the areas he be in and she waiting on one of them to bite and uh it seemed like you know she's saying that 50 is just is like diddy and jay-z and he want their spot basically he want them out of the picture so he can take over you know and uh run the show and um that's crazy i mean she already was talking about soldier boy and him and some man you you, you'll see what i'm saying man this is crazy um uh wouldn't have never thought about it with 50 and i'm saying allegedly because hey this is just entertainment purposes everything that i say and we talk about i'm always neutral i'm not picking a side i mean even if i'm feeling some type of way now y'all might hear my comment a little bit more if we go on live or something like that but you know i try to keep it as neutral until you had that 400 you know percent and you know for sure you know at that level so we'll keep it at that but um also they saying that uh it's this lawyer that that has all the dirt on these people he's saying what he have and if he expose it it's gonna break the whole entertainment industry out break everything out like everything any and every things you can think of so he's basically doing like a um a blackmail like how diddy was blackmailing he, they basically went up in there got what they needed to get or however he got what he needed to get and enough of it you know and he's saying that you know if you want to not have your name put out you got to pay and i know it's going to be a, a big penny you know that they're going to have to pay to not have their names come forward so it's going to be some that's not going to have their names come forward and it's going to be some that's going to have their names come forward i mean if you put two and two together and see who the big dogs is that he chill with you're going to know like okay if they name not on it they pay you gotta know you know what i mean and allegedly they're saying your boy jay he was one of the first you know in the in the chair you know, first in attendance to, you know, e- eliminate that, you know, but uh, we will see. And sometimes it will work. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes they might say, hey, we don't need a fee. We're just going to put it out. I mean, you never know. So that's just crazy in itself as well. You know, um, everybody's having an effect from the Diddy situation, man. It's just you know, and now they're coming out with the cartoons. They got the wax figures and all types of little toys like the Ken doll, wax figure, Barbie doll, whatever, you know, Ken doll. Yeah, they got him, lotion, tapes, and all kinds of stuff. Man, this stuff is crazy, man. Like, Jaguar Wright said she got it. So, I'm going to just tell y'all this. She's going to keep putting it out. She's going to keep saying what she got to say. And she ain't holding back, obviously. She don't care. She ain't worried about nothing. You know, like French Montana, he ain't worried about nothing. So I'm pretty sure, you know, she didn't tighten up security, everything she needed to do so she can make this happen. And the platforms that she go to, I know she feel comfortable at too. So y'all got to check this out. Let me know what y'all think about it, man. Drop in the comments, man. Let's talk about this one right here too. And um, hit that subscribe button. Run it up for me, man. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I appreciate all the love and support, man. As always, y'all already know how we rock it, man. We all the family, man, and we're just going to keep going up, man, to the next one, man. I'm out. In unity, to try to stop this from happening for our future industry. Do you forgive somebody for taking somebody's ass? There's a lot of people out here taking from people. Not only, like, like people are, people are getting robbed of not only their money and their spirituality, they're getting robbed of their womanhood and manhood. 
asses are being taken in ways that nobody can explain. Do you chuckle? Do you laugh? Do you help? Do you criticize? Because I see a lot of jokes out there right now talking about baby oil. Everybody got a joke about having baby oil and lube. Is that okay? Is that the message? <laughs> that was funny, fam. Now what? I don't use baby oil. Lube sometimes in sex makes it better. Should I come out with Ray Y Jelly and do some kind of like skit and say, KY just gave me a deal. Ray Y Jelly, I got a thousand of them. Ha 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 ha. Ray Y. That funny to you? It's not to me. Because there's a victim out there that has been caught up in something that has affected their lives. And if it has something to do with that, or it has something to do with any other products, or any other thing you're hearing about, it's distasteful. I'd smoked something that Puff had gave me, and it was like, it, it was as if I'd, I had partied like three nights straight. It was, like, <laughs> yeah. it was the craziest. <laughs> I, I was just like, I'm about to go to the airport, you know, I need something that'll knock me out. I mean, it, it totally did the opposite. It was, I, was, I, I, did cra I was doing crazy dance moves to the weirdest music for 20 minutes straight, like, out, like while he was on the phone, and I was just outside the window looking in while he was looking at me like man i just wanted someone to go to the airport you know just to, to last me so i can knock out on this flight and he's like yeah, yeah i'm gonna have my guy so he goes down comes back up with his stuff and the guy shows puff and i was like no 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 i'm trying to give him like the he said the snoop doggy dog is what he said he's trying to give me so i was like oh yeah yeah for sure i want yeah <laughs> yeah what is that what's up with yeah, that where's that sounds, sounds good whatever right. the hell that yeah, is like what is that so <laughs> Long story short, he gra he finally finds it, and he's like, "Oh, here you go." He's like, "Now, the, now, my guy said take four, like four hits, and like stop, All right? You know, like, and we didn't, you know, I just kept going, so, yeah." And so, like, he was like, he was like, "Come back up in five minutes," and I mean, when I tell you, I came back up in five minutes and like had a <laughs> had a result for him, like you know what I mean? Like if it was, and then he's on the phone running his empire, yeah, and yeah. you're dancing naked outside, <laughs> outside of his, his window. window like <laughs> Child, we got some piping hot tea this morning on none other than Diddy himself. Well, actually not Diddy, Diddy's inner circle. So y'all know that attorney Busby, the one that's like representing 120 victims of Diddy Gate and is like handling all of that? He spoke yesterday and he shared some very interesting updates. So basically, he said those 120, that's not all, folks. He plans to go after anyone that basically had major knowledge of what was going on at those parties. Y'all, that could be a lot of folks. He basically said, if you attended a party and you knew there were drugs being put into people's drinks that led to other things, I'm coming after you. In so many words. He also confirmed that demand letters have been sent out to a number of people besides Diddy. So basically, the demand letters are an attempt to have these celebrities pay up before it becomes a public lawsuit. Because if they pay up ahead of time, it won't be public. And we may never know who's getting these letters. But Busby went on to say that he's actually had some celebrities already reach out to his law firm offering to pay up. Job. I would love to know who those celebrities are, wouldn't you? And Diddy Gate continues. The indictment. I mean, I don't really feel any way about it. You know what I mean? Um, he did what he did. You know, he's the diddler. Um, and what happens in the dark will come to light. You know, it, it seems to be one of those type of situations where um, there's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes, but in the open at the same time, you know what I mean? Like if you run in certain circles, there's things that you've heard for years. Um, maybe not necessarily on a, on a criminal level, um, but there's a lot of stuff that I've heard, you know, that could involve baby oil and all that type of shit, where I've been hearing that shit for years, bro, since the 90s, bro. I've been hearing about like, like, 
bisexual type of shit since the 90s. You heard? That's what I've been hearing. Um, but not not the freak offs per se. No, nah, I didn't necessarily know about that. Because Puff, Puffy used to be known as like a good party promoter. Like he would have parties in New York. Um, him and this, this lady, uh, Jessica Rosenblum. And they used to have very, you know, a lot of celebrities would go to their parties. There would be a lot of chicks there. And, you know, they'd have the good parties, like, you know, at different venues around the city. And when they was the promoter, you would know that, okay, that might be a party you want to go to because it's going to be popping. But it wasn't any kind of, like, there was no signs and no freak off type of shit. This is shit that happened later when he's having parties at his mansions and shit like that. Like, I only know him for going to those parties that were out in the public. You see what I'm saying? That's the only Diddy party I ever been to was out in public. And it was no freak off shit. There was no um, outwardly gay shit going on or anything like that. So that's been going around since the 90s, him being bisexual? I heard that's why he had got fired from um Uptown. That he got caught in a in a in a precarious act, doing something real baby oilish in the in the office. You know? Now I'm not gonna get into the rumor of who the other dude was, but y'all heard the rumor. And homeboy, you know, the other dude says it's not true, but I don't know. I'm just saying that was the rumor since back then. Yeah, somebody told me about the how they walked in on Diddy getting fellatio from another man. Yep. Wow, dude. But speaking of baby oil, how you feel about the feds? People should be putting pressure on LeBron James. I am still so not okay with the fact that this man who elected himself the president of all things black lives, anytime a black criminal died, he was out there telling people to protest on the streets like a like a government plant. I'm just not okay with the silence. I, I genuinely am not okay with his silence on the issue of Diddy, who he claims was his boy, that who he claimed had the best parties ever. There ain't no party like a Diddy party. And he's still silent. So you, we have this former NBA player, Kwame Brown. He has a YouTube channel, and he is now calling out LeBron James. I think it's fantastic. This is what needs to happen, and it shouldn't just be Kwame, but take a listen. Kwame, uh, Kwame Brown been sitting here chilling, talking politics, while LeBron James been ducking smoke from Candace Owens. He also been ducking smoke from Chell Sonnen. He been ducking smoke for anybody asking them questions about this goddamn situation you know because them the greatest parties alive you know lebron james on camera saying ain't no party like a diddy party and we know them some naked ass parties <laughs> those are i can confirm some naked ass parties that is a fact kwame is correct and he does seem to be ducking smoke and i'm not here for it i'm just not here for trying to convince me that this guy who alleges that he is the king, had nothing to say when we watched a video of Cassie Ventura getting beat by his friend Diddy. Could you imagine, like, like purporting yourself to be a person that cares so much about black lives, branding yourself in that manner, and then you have an opportunity to speak out on something that is so obviously morally wrong and horrific, and you choose silence. Here's my thing. If he's going to choose this silence, he better keep at it. I don't want to hear another political quotation or expression from LeBron James, from his ex feed in the streets. If he says anything, seriously, I I'm just going to lose my mind because the reality is, is he's a complete and utter fraud. He's an absolute fraud. Hanging around with people who live their lives like that while trying to preach to the rest of us about the struggles facing black Americans, but won't address the ones that were happening at the very parties that he was attending. It's an absolute nonsense. Times at this point, uh, he's going anywhere. Um, we want to make sure that, that every entity and every individual who had some role in this, that you know, that we examine that, and if, and if, if the law uh, supports it, that we bring them in and make them a part of this case as well. And just on that second point about the gender 
split here. There have been lots of rumors that it's not just women or girls who've been involved in, in being abused here, but also young boys and young men. Can you clarify how many of your own cases are male? I would say that number is 50-50. Uh, uh, according to the, the client group, uh, it looks like we should try to, if you, if you were to graph it, uh, the number of males uh, increased dramatically after 2015. Uh, you know, we've looked at this client group embedded in so many different ways, as you would expect that we, there, you can see a trend that the number of males involved increased somewhere around the 2015 timeframe. I don't know why that is, but that's, that's what the numbers show. And based on the volume of claims you're getting, does that mean that these widespread rumors about Diddy's sexuality are likely to be true? Yeah, I won't comment on that. I, I can only comment on, on the allegations that, that are being made, that will be made in a public filing. Uh, and I'll let people draw their own conclusions, but I will say that 50% of the alleged victims are in fact male. Uh, and that includes uh, the minors uh, that were minors at the time of the allegations. I mean, it's truly shocking, some of these statistics you're giving. Uh, in relation to tapes or videos and stuff that you've been told about what's come into your possession, have you seen material, evidential material, which in your estimation as a lawyer could cross the line into criminal activity? You know, that's a that's a difficult question. You know, the, as most of your viewers know, the standard of proof in a civil case versus a criminal case is very different. In a criminal case, you have to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. That's why the federal authorities, you know, they typically won't bring a case unless it's rock solid. And I'm sure they talked to a lot of people. They collected a lot of evidence. And, you know, from all of that, there's only three counts. Uh, the civil system is standard of proof is preponderance of the evidence. What I like to describe it when I'm in court as more likely than not. Uh, and so when you look at these videos and pictures and bottles of oil that I've received and, and other things that, that we've been given, you know, the, the piece of evidence, the piece of physical evidence or the video by it, in and of itself doesn't really prove anything. You know, you see a sexual act being performed on video, but you need a witness or the victim to kind of put this in context. You, know, you see some sexual act that's, that was captured by a third party on video. You still have to have somebody to say, okay, that individual who was in, engaged in that, that's who that is. And this individual who was engaged in that was, was, uh, was drugged, uh, you know, and, and so that people are very interested in what do you have on video? And what do you have as by way of evidence? And ultimately, in these kinds of cases, it ultimately comes down to he said, she said. That's it every single time, or he said, he said. And so the most important thing is the credibility of the victim. Mm -hmm. And typically, uh, in these cases, the defense is always the same. Uh, when you bring these kinds of allegations against someone, the first defense is always attack the victim, try to destroy the credibility of the victim. Uh, and what I'm looking for is to make sure that the victim, that I have the evidence to put the victim in the room uh, with the alleged perpetrator. And then I try to collect witnesses and other data to corroborate uh, what occurred. Okay. Really, it comes down to uh, the credibility of the victim and the credibility of the alleged perpetrator. And that's why we, we do a, we, hopefully we do a very good job on the front end and make it clear to these people who are calling in that, that make these allegations that look, ultimately, uh, you'll have to testify publicly in front of a jury in an open court and tell your story and you'll be cross-examined and your name will be known. And, and that helps me you know, do the fact checking that we need to do to make sure that we're only bringing those claims that are that we believe are most credible. And, and unfortunately, sometimes people with real claims, real legitimate claims, um, you know, it makes it difficult for them to even pursue these. Right. And, and, and then you feather in the fact that, that in many of these cases, the allegation is that the individual was drugged. Um, it makes it even more difficult because this particular drug, this liquid G, they call it, which is basically a date rape drug, you know, it, it almost wipes your memory. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a Herculean task with this many people making these types of claims. But just if it was just one claim, it's, it's difficult enough. So this is a challenge. 
Uh, I think we're, we're, we're on the right side of this. We're going to pursue these as aggressively as, as the court system will. Finally, how long have you been a lawyer? Uh, coming up on 30 years. Have you ever been involved in anything on this scale? You know, I, I, you know, when the BP horizon explosion occurred and the, that vessel sank, uh, we had, you know, obviously thousands of clients. Uh, I dealt with the Deshaun Watson cases, uh, obviously not of this scope, but, you know, there was a lot of media attention. Uh, but certainly nothing like this, you know, I, 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 even I, and I, I, mean, I think, you know, I didn't just, didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I've been around for a while. Uh, even I was very surprised about the scope of this and the amount of people stepping forward uh, who said they were victimized based based upon conduct either uh, performed by or orchestrated by Sean Combs. It's truly shocking. Uh, Tony Busby from Houston, thank you very much indeed. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It, it wasn't that. It was uh, quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is remove that false accusation um, that's demonstrably false, um, or a court's going to order you to. And so I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. He meaning Piers Morgan. Removing it and apologizing for it, yes. What changed here in my mind is that somebody on a so-called journalistic platform exploited that kind of random rumor mill, whether it's disconnected from reality or what have you, and lifted it up. Um, and by doing that, you know, they not only caused harm here, but they are also droning out the voices of real victims. And by doing that to get clicks, it didn't just harm the Carters. What 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 he did effectively was to drone out the voices of of actual victims in an, an ongoing case in an ongoing investigation. And that was that was too much for me. Between Diddy and Epstein, there's, there's, there's probably several thousand hours of footage here. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird that the people on those videos are lecturing the rest of us about our moral failings, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. What is that? Well, I mean, part of how they deflect attention from themselves is by you know, criticizing the morals of others. Yes. It's sort of like a preemptive moral strike. Those who are saying Trump is a threat to democracy are themselves actually the threat to democracy. It feels like we're getting to a place where the rest of us know too much. Like, what happens next now that we know all this? The kidnapper's shown us his face. Like, what happens? Well... I think if, uh, if Trump wins, we can do some house cleaning and shed light on things. I just don't think it was what they say it was. That's all I'm gonna say. It's not that I'm scared, it's just, yeah, I'll be real, I am scared. I don't wanna talk about it. I mean, it's a scary topic to talk about. That's it, it's that, it's that simple. But I mean, it's not easy to put two and two together. Like, if you have common sense, you know what I mean? Seriously. So he's, he's agreeing with you, basically. <laughs> what we on next, though, chat? <laughs> There's somebody threatening us right now in a way that I'm just like, you know what? Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Take any more that you have already fucking taken. So do it. They sacrificed and did it. They, they, they said, nigga, you gotta take this shit because we ain't, we, we, we can't be involved. But Diddy's smart. He filmed every fuck session. So he was fucking Clive and the motherfucking and freak boy that run uh, Universal Music Group. So he got them on some fuck tapes. Now that's why they raiding the house because they got friends in Homeland Security and the feds. And they said, get, get in there and get them tapes from this nigga. He's trying to blackmail us. That's what I believe is going on. What if I told you it gets worse? This dude claims to be in possession of some of the Diddy tapes. And he says that some of them are so disturbing that if he put them out, the entire music industry would crumble. Take a look at this. If I showed one of these tapes, so I'm telling you right now, the whole music industry and Hollywood, it would just grind down like this. They're all gonna start pointing at each other like this, and it's gonna be bad. We've already set it up. We have multiple attorneys. We know how to do it. It's not my first rodeo. I solved the greatest murder case in history. Three of them. I know how to do it. We're going to do it, but just gonna come in pieces. And there's also ways we can, let's say, not censor it, but we can, we can kind of soften it. My main takeaway from that clip is the fact that they're already prepared to bring everybody down. The fact that everything is already set up. It's not like they're out here chasing people or trying to figure things out. This is all ready to go. I just think the information might be so shocking that they have to be careful with the public. This must have been shocking to you that somebody comes on uh, a show and then kind of levels these 
vague-ish allegations. Were you kind of ready for something like this to eventually happen? Listen, there's rumors and then there's nonsense, and this is one step further, right? This is a pointed and formal accusation of something, um, and um, I felt it needed to be responded to. So uh, I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It, it wasn't that, it was uh, quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is remove that false accusation um, that's demonstrably false, um, or a court's gonna order you to. And so I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. He meaning Piers Morgan. Removing it and apologizing for it, yes. What changed here in my mind is that somebody on a so-called journalistic platform exploited that kind of random rumor mill, whether it's disconnected from reality or what have you, and lifted it up. Um, and by doing that, you know, they not only caused harm here, but they are also droning out the voices of real victims. And by doing that to get clicks, it didn't just harm the Carters. What 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 he did effectively was to drone out the voices of, of actual victims in an ongoing case, in an ongoing investigation. And that was that was too much for me. Are you in the process of making sure that it is taken down everywhere? What I am here to say is that in a situation as serious as this, um, somebody who puts themselves out as a journalist should not effectively take advantage of the situation and exploit somebody in this way. Um, and so that's that's the real reason for action. Does it, does it strike you a little bit that there's been a lot of silence uh, in Hollywood in the wake of all of this? Well, as to the Carters, you know, I can tell you that when they put their foot down on something as they did here, you know, they are sending a message. And if they can't stand up and, and make sure right from wrong, then who can? I have always believed that the truth will come out in courtrooms, and I'm sure the truth will come out.
Okay, so I've been doing a deep dive into the Diddy stuff. And the ironic part about it, from my perspective, is that a few of the things that he's the most likely to go down for are the things that you and I probably don't really find all that morally reprehensible. What am I talking about? Well, for example, the fact that he was flying around sex workers. That seems hard to argue. However, me, you, like we probably agree that if you want to be flying girls around to have crazy sex parties and you're paying them and they want to do it, for sure. But from the eyes of the government, federally, sounds like a crime. On top of that, having a network of people that are helping you to basically bring drugs to augment your freak-offs, again, probably a federal crime. I'm sure that if they want to make that case, they can. But you and I probably agree that if you want to do a little coke, who gives a fuck? If you want to, who gives a fuck? If you want to do Molly every night, whatever. And then on top of that, I just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that people are trying to villainize stuff like using IDs after a night of party, partying. Like, a lot of the richest people I know, that's normal if they party. They spend a couple hundred bucks to have the doctor come and hook you up to the IV. The idea that that's being presented as if it's like clear-cut proof that somebody's a fucking monster, kind of weird. Now, I, I assume there's a lot more concrete details about Diddy to come, but it seems like it might be the case that he's really going to do time for a bunch of shit that you and I either have done or at least wouldn't object to. However, that being said, there's obviously a lot more to come. Thank <laughs> you.